Tom is 14. Compared to his nine-year-old brother, he looks almost like a man. But he isn't. Tom is an adolescent, still growing and developing. He's going to shoot a good many more baskets before he's full grown. There are many signs that Tom is changing from a boy to a man. For one thing, he's growing particularly fast. Look at these things. I just got them two or three months ago and they fitted fine. Other boys, like Tom's short friend, may begin this sudden growth later, when they're 15 or even 16. Some begin a year or two earlier. Everyone matures on his own time schedule. Tom is also getting a deeper voice, and sometimes it gives him a little trouble. Don't be insulting my fr <coughs> friend. I don't like the way you say friend. Andy's voice hasn't started to change yet, even though he's actually older. But right now, Tom is sometimes soprano and sometimes bass. Me, 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 me. Me, 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 me. The reason for the change is that the larynx grows quite a bit at adolescence. The larynx is here at the top of the windpipe and is the housing for the vocal cords. This is an actual photograph of vocal cords taken through a special instrument. The cords vibrate when the person breathes out. And now watch the vibration in slow motion. You can demonstrate how the vibrations of vocal cords produce sounds by blowing air across a rubber band. <laughs> In adolescence, the growing larynx and longer vocal cords produce a deep sound. A young boy has a smaller larynx and shorter vocal cords, which make a higher sound. While the vocal cords are growing, sometimes they get out of control, and sometimes they sound a little strange. Tom is undergoing another change, a change in his skin. There are sweat glands over most of the body that produce perspiration when a person is hot or when he exercises. But at adolescence, another kind of sweat gland starts to work. Mm -hmm. I didn't see you in the school today. Yeah. Oh. Say, I was wondering if, well, maybe you could, well, if you weren't doing anything, Maybe you'd like to go to the dance with me, Friday. You would? Great. That's fine. About 8.15. Sure. Okay, goodbye. Uh-huh. Sure. These new sweat glands work when we're nervous, tense, or afraid. They're concentrated in a few places. One of these is under the arms. Here is a drawing showing a cross-section of the skin. This is a hair, a hair follicle, the channel in which the hair grows, and here, one of the regular sweat glands that produces perspiration when we are hot. The other kind of sweat gland, which doesn't function when we're younger, grows at adolescence and begins to produce perspiration with a distinctive odor. At this stage, boys find that they need to change their clothes more often to keep them from having an objectionable odor. At adolescence, boys also find that they need to bathe often. There are other signs that Tom's skin is changing. The condition called acne is common to a majority of adolescents. It's found most often on the forehead, sides of the nose, chin, and on the back. Acne is caused by the action of glands that produce an oily substance, the sebaceous glands. Each sebaceous gland opens into a hair follicle. 
The oil manufactured by the gland passes up the channel to the skin surface. When a boy reaches adolescence, these sebaceous glands begin to produce more oil, much more in some people than others. Also during adolescence, the cells of the skin begin to grow more rapidly and here and there will obstruct some of the openings. The oily material mixed with particles of skin clogs and hardens, forming a plug. If the plug remains, it darkens with exposure to air and becomes what we call a blackhead. Since the sebaceous gland continues to produce oil, the hair follicle may break eventually, causing the skin around the blackhead to become inflamed and swollen. Sometimes a small infection may start and spread out into the surrounding tissues. Multiply this several times and you have acne. Tom's acne isn't bad. He does what he can to keep it under control. The easiest and best way is to wash with a mild soap and warm water two or three times a day. Scrubbing injures the skin. So wash gently but thoroughly with a washcloth. This not only removes oil and bacteria, but also helps to clear pores that are beginning to plug. Doctors may recommend special soaps for some people to help remove the oil from the skin and keep it dry. Some doctors believe that the condition of the skin can be affected by the kind of food you eat. You've all seen people in the cafeteria line loading their trays like this with an unbalanced meal of fats and starches and sweets. Many doctors say that too much of this kind of food can make acne worse. However, other doctors point out that nobody has proved it. They say that growing active adolescents need many kinds of food. Certainly no one should try to treat his acne by putting himself on a diet without first consulting a doctor. At least all doctors agree that it's good to eat plenty of proteins, vegetables, and fruits. There are two other things, surprisingly, that also affect the condition of the skin. One is exercise. The other is rest. The effect on the skin is indirect, but very real. When a person gets run down, his skin becomes run down too. Exercise and rest are necessary for a person's general health. 